Today, we're going to be looking at the wheels of the Model T. Here I have the front left or front driver's side wheel that came off the car. Now this car is a 1927 and it had the option of demountable wooden spoked wheels. These cars were offered with wire spoked wheels, demountable wooden wheels, and the older clincher type non-demountable wooden wheels. So this car had the demountable wooden wheels which are arguably the more desirable style of the wood spoked wheels because it is way easier to change a tire on them. On this wheel you can undo the four bolts around the edge and the outer rim comes off. That way you can store your spare already inflated on the outer rim and just take your old flat one off and put the new one on and the wheel doesn't actually come off the car. Now the older clincher style tires the rim did not come off of the wheel. So you had to actually have a pry bar and pry the old wheel off and the new wheel on. And then you had to have a pump to inflate the tire and the tires had to be pumped to a really high pressure, 55 or 60 PSI. So this wheel is way more desirable today because of the fact that you can change the tire way easier and the tires don't have to be pumped as high. The pressure can be run at 25 to 30 PSI just fine because the pressure does not, is not what's holding the tire on like on the older clincher tires. So that's the style of this wheel. Now these cars were offered with woods or wire spoked wheels. They're a little different than Model A wheels but look very similar. They, they're not interchangeable but you can get an adapter kit to adapt Model A wheels to fit a Model T if you want wire wheels because they look very similar and there's tons of Model A wheels around. Um, but this car didn't have them. This car had these wood wheels and I like wood wheels so we're going to try and fix these. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look at them and see what we can do about it. They're really tight. The spokes are not loose. I can't find any loose spokes, but they're really weathered. They're really cracked up and obviously very old. So I'm gonna have to give them a light sand and see what happens. The original ones were all painted black. The whole wheel was black. Um, this outer ring was actually galvanized. So the whole wheel was black and then this outer ring was galvanized so it looked like a silver color. Um, it's really expensive to re-galvanize them and there's really no point to it uh, because if it gets chipped up then you have to touch it up with paint anyway. So I am going to do clean up this, do a really good um, rust, pri rust proof primer on it and then paint it a galvanized color. They have really good spray paints now that look just like galvanized steel. So I'm probably going to do that in, instead of galvanizing because it's way more money and really not worth it. And so that's for the outer rim, but the inner was all painted black originally. The wood spokes were all black, as far as I can tell. Now, records weren't kept real well back then, so some of them could have been stained, but it was very unlikely. The vast majority of them that we know of were black. And so the whole thing was just one solid, glossy black color. Um, it would definitely be way easier to go that route, especially on these old wheels, because they're so chipped up, I could sand them down, put some good filler in them, and make them look all smooth again and then paint it black and it would all blend real nicely. I think the wood stained looks way cooler. It kind of shows that you have wood wheels because when they're black it's you, kind of hard to tell if they are wood. Um, but I don't know if I can't even stain them because of the condition of the spokes. So I might have to go the black route. But I'm going to get them cleaned up, pull off the outer rims and possibly the plate on the hubcap. I don't know if I, I think I can take off one side of the plate, the back side here. The inner side of the hubcap is actually pressed into the wood spokes here, so you can't take that off without a great deal of effort and a press and all that. So I'm, I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to get these cleaned up and we'll see what we can make of them. Now here's the wheel all sanded up. So I sanded each one of these spokes and I did a pretty good sand. It's not too thorough. Um, I could do more, but I don't think I'm going to because it's going to be a ton of work to do all four of them. It took a lot, a lot of time as it is just to get this this far. Um, but let me show you, there's a couple uh, defects in the wood 
along one of these spokes. It is pretty pitted up right here. And there's some pr pretty good cracks in some of them along the edges. And they're, they're not structural. The spokes are really tight and strong. Um, they're just cosmetic cracks and stuff in the spokes. So there's really no point in sanding further and getting a super, super shiny, nice finish on this. And it's a 100-year-old wheel. And I like it to look like that. Most of the wood stained wheels that you're going to see on cars, natural wood finished wheels, most of those have been rebuilt. All these spokes have been replaced. There's many people that do it. Strutsman is probably one of the most famous, um, but a lot of Amish craftsmen are really good at rebuilding these wheels, and they offer very reasonable rates. I think Strutsman charges $200 a wheel to redo all of the wood in the wheels and uh, sandblast all the metal and paint it, and then he gives you the wheels. Uh, with the spokes on finish and you can do what you want and most people see the nice wood and don't want to cover that up so they'll stain them. So that's the vast majority of, of the natural wood wheels you'll see are all rebuilt, renewed wood. Um, but this one's not. This one is nearly a hundred year old wood and I want to keep it that way. And so regardless of the little cosmetic defects, I'm going to stain it as it is and we'll see how it turns out. But I think it's going to be really cool. So for the next step, I'm going to coat this with a layer of linseed oil. Now the linseed oil will help rejuvenate the wood. It will increase the strength, it will soak in deep into the wood, and it will give it a little bit of finish, it will look nice, it will make the grain stand out nicely in the wood, and it will rejuvenate the wood and give it more strength. So we're going to put that on, let it soak for 24 hours, and then we got to do a varnish. Now I've decided to do, at least for this initial wheel, for a trial run, there's a marine grade varnish I believe it's called Helmsman Spar Varnish, and it's, it's coming in the mail. I'll have it here in, a, here in a little while, and we'll finish this wheel. But it is a dull satin varnish that I'll put on this wheel. And it's, it's called satin, but as varnishes go, it is satin, but it's probably going to be somewhat glossy because all varnishes are a little bit glossy. So I think that'll be perfect. I don't want it super shiny, but I do want a really good high quality finish and a little bit of shine to it. So the satin spar varnish um, should be really good. We'll do a trial run on this wheel and see how it turns out. And if, it, if it's not right, we can sand it back down. But I think that's going to work out well. A lot of people have recommended it for wood wheels. A lot of people use it for wood wheels and it has great UV protection from the sunlight and water because it's meant for ships. So it'll, it should be really good product for this. We'll test it out and see how it goes. But first we've got to do a coat of linseed oil. So let's do that first. So I've let the linseed oil dry now for several days. I put a second coat on it because the first coat dried in pretty fast and this gave it a nice finish and slightly darker after the second coat. And I want it a little bit darker because I don't want a really light colored wheel with a dark colored car. It kind of stands out a little too much. I want it to stand out, but not that much. So I like this darker finish that the two coats of oil gave it. So I'm just going to leave it as is and put the varnish on. And it might darken it up just a tiny bit more, but it is clear. It just has a tiny bit of tint to help with the UV protection. So the varnish that I've chosen is Minwax Helmsman Spar Urethane. So this is a urethane that is specifically meant for spars on ships or places that are really wet like that. It is really good protection against sunlight and rain, salt water, etc. So I'm going to be trying that on this. It is a satin finish, but it's a varnish. So it's going to have a little bit of gloss, even though it is satin. It's still going to shine a little bit. And with a gloss varnish, they are really super shiny, like a mirror finish that you'd see on a ship. And I don't want that. I just want a little bit of gloss. So this satin finish should be just right in sort of a satin varnish type environment. So we're going to try it on this wheel, see if we like it. If not, I can always sand it down and try something else. But we're going to try it on this wheel and see how it goes. Now here's the finished wheel with all the black paint work done, the varnishing done, and Gotta say, I really love the, the way this is. The spokes are a tiny bit darker than most cars I've seen. Most cars with wood wheels have really light colored spokes. And I really like the tone that these spokes turned out. So, now it is time to mount these on the car. Here are the wheel bearings. So to put the wheels back on, we need to repack these with grease. Now they had grease in them originally. I soaked them in diesel to remove all the old grease. Now we can put new in. So there are old methods of shoving the grease down in here and the old timers would have done that with their palms. There's, there's tricks with your palms to force grease down on the inside of there. 
Um, and that works, it gets grease all over. You have to have rubber gloves if you don't want to get it all in your hands. Um, but now there's a new tool called a, a bearing packer. You've had these around a long time, just not as long as the Model T. But this just basically fits around the bearing and then you use a grease gun on the Zerk to force grease into the bearing. So you install the bearing like this and I put the other half on top. And then it's got a bolt in it. Where did the bolt go? I just had it. Here it is. So the bolt screws through the top and bottom, forces the two together tightly, and then you fit a grease gun over the Zerk on the top and squeeze grease into it. And that'll force grease to the inside of the bearing and out through the bearing itself so it'll lubricate all the rollers in there and fully pack this with grease. So we've got to do that for these outer bearings or, and the inner bearings. Or I guess I might have them backwards. These, these would probably be the outer bearings. But these bearings have threads in them, and they're really, they don't use bearings like this anymore. And they do make reproductions of these if you need them, but you can also get a threaded insert that threads over the shaft, and then a more standard bearing that'll fit on top of the threaded insert. So there is options, and you can get new for all of these bearings. But this is the bearing as as it is in the car and there's also one new and one old of these it looks like they replaced one side and didn't replace the other although this one feels fine the only one that feels a little bit loose is this uh, inner bearing on the one side so i just know i'm gonna have to keep an eye on that and here is the wheel mounted on the car so i have the bearings packed and installed in the hub and the wheel itself and the hub is all one unit and the tire and rim is assembled separately. So I just have this tire sitting on the wheel right now. It's not attached, it's just sitting here. Just, just to see what it looks like. It looks kind of weird without the tire. And I just kind of set it up here just to see what it looks like. But it's not attached right now. So now the wheels, I got both front wheels mounted. And now I have to do the rims, but I've got some problems with the rims. And so those are going to be coming along later. Now this would have originally been galvanized steel. Um, I'm going to paint it with a dull aluminum spray paint instead of regalvanizing them because that's expensive. And the spray paint works just as well. Many Model T restorers use aluminum spray paint for these. So it's just going to have a dull silver color on it. And you, you'll have the tire, a dull silver color around the edge of the room, the little bit that you can see. And then you'll have the black lip and the wood spoked wheels. So it's kind of adds a little bit of color for like a white wall type look around it. That's the way they were originally. They weren't for looks. It was to protect it against rust. Um, but it does give it a nice lighter color around the around the side of the wheel. So I think it looks kind of cool. So we're going to do that and do the original style uh, paint on it instead of galvanize. But what these the work that these need is they all need a little bit of brazing around the edge. So when the car was sitting, one side was up and one was down in the dirt. So the top side is good. The, the rim is in good condition. The side that was down had a lot of water sitting on it. So it's really corroded right in here in the lip where the rubber was. And there's some pinholes. You can kind of see through it in some spots. There's pinholes. So it needs, it needs a line of brazing right on here. And so I need to get that done. And I don't have the tools to do that. So I'm going to have to find someone to do it. And I haven't done that yet. Um, one of them is missing a lug. I have a new lug to put on it. Uh, one of them, the latch broke. That's the latch that you twist it and then the rim will pull apart to make it easier to put the tire on the rim. So I need to fix the latch on one of them. One of them has some pretty bad rust holes all the way through. There's a rust hole all the way through in the middle here. So that's going to need a patch and brazing on it, a patch of metal across it and brazing. Uh, so they all need a little bit of work. So I want to get that done before I can put the rubber on the wheels. Well, that's a process that I will be using to refinish these wheels. I finished the two front wheels. Now I still have to do the rear wheels that I'll do at a later time. Now, if you would like this video, subscribe to my channel so you can stay notified of future videos and more work that I have done on this project. Like this video and comment on it if you have any questions or concerns. As always, thank you for watching.